Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. The House recently passed HJ-44, which declared that the ATF did not have the ability to turn braced pistols into short-barreled rifles. This allowed the gun grabbers to peacock around, putting their stupidity on full display as they argued against the measure including bringing in experts like Jerry Nadler into the House Rules Committee meeting before the debate on the House floor. Uh, gun to make it, a, in effect, a, a, a rifle. They couldn't even get past their opening statements without lying. We are meeting to advance a dangerous bill to make firearm stabilizing braces widely available. This isn't to make them widely available. They are already widely available after a decade of use after the ATF's okay. There's millions of these in the hands of American citizens bought in full faith that they were legal. They want to keep in place a loophole that makes it easier for people to make guns more dangerous. That would make it easier for the next mass shooter to kill people. It does not make firearms more dangerous. They are functionally the same, and if someone really wanted to make an illegal SBR, they could easily do so with a stock. And the craziest thing is this rule was inspired by guidance published under the Trump administration. Let me repeat that. The ATF under the Trump administration thought this was necessary and appropriate. Yes, the ATF under Trump first introduced a rule trying to ban braces. That's because they are a terrible organization, regardless of the administration, which has usurped congressional oversight and power and are able to redefine terms to effectively create new laws, which is exactly the point of this bill. In 1934, Congress passed the National Firearms Act, creating additional requirements to own certain especially dangerous firearms. That's incorrect. The NFA, in a shockingly short five-page bill, does not mention the firearms being dangerous at all. The regulation of short-barreled rifles is a vestigial bit of legislation that was meant to close loopholes on a pistol ban. But while the pistol ban never came to fruition, the bill closing loopholes was enacted into law. It has always been a stupid regulation, and also it doesn't ban them, as the Democrats are so fond of saying. It just enforces excessive regulation via bureaucratic nonsense and additional costs. It's so dangerous that you can have it if you give the government a little bit of money. In a sad showing for gun rights supporters, I must admit and display that the Republican representative at the House Rules Committee meeting attending as a witness in favor of the bill was not even aware that the grace period to register braced pistols had already expired. Hashtag time's up. Mr. Klein, let me just ask you if, uh, if nothing happens, when does this rule begin to affect your constituents and my constituents? Um, I would answer, gentlemen, that uh, this rule would go into effect uh, very soon, but uh, there is a grace period. It is a, a short grace period, but uh, within uh, the year, millions of Americans would be made felons. Nadler attacks the talking point that it is a mental health issue and that firearms are not the problem. It is a slander on the American people to say that our people are 75 times as mentally ill as those in Canada or England or Germany or any other country. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then again... The Republican majority is trying to make it easier for mass shooters to obtain and conceal deadly firearms. That's what this regulation addresses. In reality, this bill is supposed to make it easier for law-abiding citizens to not be convicted of felonies with fines of up to $250,000 and jail time of 10 years for each violation. The law clearly defined terms and the ATF redefined those terms to make millions of firearms suddenly subject to these strict regulations. The National Firearms Act, in which Congress specifically found 
that certain types of firearms were weapons of war and had no appropriate sporting use or use for personal protection. This is from what Congress passed. Again, read the law. It's not that long. A smart lady like yourself could probably get through those five pages in one, two hours tops. It does not mention anything about these being weapons of war, and that doesn't matter because they don't specifically regulate weapons of war. And at that time, specifically, short-barreled rifles were uncommon in military use. Also, the law makes no mention of sporting use or personal protection for any justification. It actually does not say why within the law at all. So they just project their own reasoning onto the law, ignoring all historical context. It also does not prohibit the sale of braces, nor does it punish or penalize anyone who currently owns a stabilizing brace. They mention this point a lot, like it's a big deal, that you can simply comply. However, that also means the firearm is under extensive regulation for all time, that you will have to find someone willing to pay for another tax stamp if you want to sell it, that any future disabled shooters will not have a free pass and will have the luxury of paying an extra tax on top of being subjected to these excessive regulations. And why is that? Why? Cause them, that's why. Plus, forget all of that, why should Americans need to comply with excessive tyrannical rules and regulations? Why, with that attitude, there would have never been an American Revolution or Civil Rights Movement. Oh, it's just some taxes without representation. Oh, it's just the back of the bus. Why are you complaining? Just comply. Different ways in which current owners of these braces can be in compliance with the regulation, including simply registering the devices. Wrong. The, in 13 states, you can't own a short-barreled rifle. Or detaching the stabilizing brace from a firearm. Absolutely. Wrong. It doesn't penalize any current bra um, brace owners. Wrong. The actual Second Amendment is not a suicide pact. You think of what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. Also, if Nadler is sworn in as a witness here, there might be a little bit of perjury. Uh, do you disagree with this letter that the ATF, uh, when uh, President Obama was president, that the ATF sent to Mr. Bosco that... Well, I, I can't comment on the 2012 letter, which I know nothing about, but... Yet here Nadler is on April 26, commenting on the letter in question in a hearing with ATF Director Dettelbach after another representative read almost the entire letter. Thank you. Let me first make clear that the brace that Spencer approved never made it to the market. Mr. Bosco changed the design dramatically. Knows nothing about it, eh? Anyone heard of perjury? They demonstrate again and again that they have no idea what is in the rule. You said that the brace is different today. Does that mean if Mr. Bosco makes the exact identical brace that he sent to the ATF, he should be allowed to do that? The brace uh, from 2012? I yeah. Would, I would think so. That's not true. The rule says there may be a design that could be legal without NFA regulations, but does not identify any. And they had the opportunity. They could have said the original brace is legal without these regulations, but they don't. It's almost like they don't want any braces to be available. Nadler makes up his own interpretation of the rule, saying there are forearm braces and shoulder braces. Yes, but Would the gentleman remember you that the forearm, uh, the forearm br brace is what was held to be legal by the ATF. The shoulder brace is what the ATF has objected to and what uh, we're talking about today. You were talking about apples and oranges. That was a forearm brace, not the shoulder brace. There is no legal distinction or difference. What he calls shoulder braces are the exact same thing as forearm braces. 
They can still be wrapped around the forearm. If anything with the ability to wrap around the forearm was fine, then they pretty much all would be fine. Ironically, as Representative Massey points out, Nadler kind of makes an argument against this pernicious rule. Is either if the brace is, is designed in such a way as uh, to uh, uh, be a forearm brace, that's okay. But it's designed in such a way as to enable a, uh, a short barrel pistol to be sold from, I'm sorry, to be fired from the shoulder, then that's subject to the rule. Now, now you get into another legal distinction about how it's designed and how it's used. And the law does talk about if it's designed a certain way, and Mr. Bosco designed it not to be fired from the shoulder. And so you're applying two standards here. No, Was it designed to be fired from the shoulder, or did the consumers who bought it then fire it from the shoulder? You can't use both uh, legal regimes to regulate this. Honestly, the exchange between Massey and Nadler is amazing. I could put it in here unedited, but it is rather lengthy. And Nadler demonstrates such a complete lack of knowledge of the rule and his own reading comprehension, it boggles the mind. It, let me, it's let me. not the ownership of the accessory that triggers a penalty. It's the use without following the regulation. It's the possession. No, it is not the possession. Well, you're, if you possess one of these, it is the possession. It's not the use. If you haven't registered this with the federal government or destroyed it. It's possession of a short-barreled rifle, not of the brace. And can we, and so you're agreeing it's not use? No, I'm not agreeing. If, if, if you have the brace and you do not attach it to a short-barreled rifle, that's fine. It is not for owning a piece of plastic. If you follow the proper procedures and you don't convert uh, your your um, um, pistol into a short-barreled rifle, which is prohibited, is no crime. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. It's for owning a piece of plastic that you've owned for up to 10 years. It is years. not for ownership of the piece of plastic at all. You can own it for as long as you want. You can have as many such things as you want. It's use of it with a, sh with a, with a pistol to create a short-barreled rifle, which is what... Is prohibited. So are you saying if you merely detach the, the brace from the firearm, you're no longer violating the law? Yes. Okay, that's what okay. Mr. Dettelbach said too. But neither of you understand this rule. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. There are documentation that accompanies this rule. It all says that you have to destroy the brace or make it otherwise unreattachable, that, that it can't be attached to the firearm. Let me first. read you from the what? ATF website. Okay, read us that. Other compliance options provided under the final rule are the following. Remove the, one, remove the short barrel and attach a 16-inch or longer rifled barrel to the firearm. Permanently remove and dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached. Turn the firearm into your local ATF office or destroy the firearm. I'm, gl I'm glad you read that. So now do you understand why what you said before was inaccurate, that all you have to do is separate them? Or because here, let me, let me read you what Mr. Dettelbach, this is the director of the ATF, said about this rule. Detachment, that's not for us to regulate. If somebody simply, we wrote the rule to make it easy to comply with. If somebody just at their home detaches the weapon from the brace and keeps them apart, they do not have to register anything. They can keep the brace, they can keep the business end of the gun. Correct. That is incorrect. You just read me the rule. He just read it. Massey confirms that the ATF clarified that their director did not know what he was talking about when discussing the rule. Yeah, we, we contacted the ATF and they wrote us back and they basically said that Mr. Dettelbach's statement was not correct. Mm. Do, you, do you think you're gonna stop any shootings by doing this? Yes. Which, can you, you think the, any of the mass public shootings or any of the shootings in the past, the, the shooter would have said, oh my gosh, it's illegal to have this thing on this thing and I'm gonna go do a shooting. Well, we, it will make it harder for people to have mass shootings because they, 
because the weapons will be less uh, uh, repeatable. What do you mean by repeatable? Um, a repeat shooter. Um, I, I don't, that is to say, uh, semi-automatic, in effect. The, um, this brace has nothing to do with whether the firearm is m manual bolt or semi-automatic or fully it automatic. Makes a, Nadler isn't hiding his true intentions and goals when taken to task. Let me ask you a question. Isn't it true that you would prefer to ban all AR-15s? Yes. And um, isn't it true that you would prefer to ban anything with a detachable magazine? Well, actually, to, ho to, to limit the magazine to 15 rounds. And you think keeping them at 15 rounds instead of 16 rounds makes the firearm Well, 15 safe. rounds instead of 100 rounds. I mean, you have to set the limit somewhere. Are you, are you aware that you can just carry more magazines? They argued about the assault weapons ban of 1994, and Massey pointed out that the ban focused on cosmetic features, and in reality, the number of modern sporting rifles more than doubled within that 10-year period, but that's too many variables for Nadler's brain to handle. I think that is the case, and I think you'll find the statistics are that the number of mass shootings went down from 1994 until 2004 and sharply increased after 2004. So if they went down and the number of so-called assault weapons doubled during that period of time. I don't think that's true. But it is true. Uh, uh, the underlying basis for this rule was developed not during the Biden administration, but during the Trump administration. He thinks it's a big gotcha moment that a similar rule was proposed once during the Trump administration, as if it matters to gun rights advocates. The administration that illegally banned bump stocks had a bad take? Shocking. And he's so focused on this, he doesn't listen to or understand the answer. That the rule was developed under the Trump administration to reverse the Obama administration's interpretation. No, incorrect. He doesn't comprehend the dig, that he's just saying the exact same thing. It was verified differently under a other administration's government as a response. He's left confused and bewildered. What I expected you to say was that yes, that is precisely what happened and then the objective members of law enforcement in the ATF. <laughs> ATF objective? Okay. It requires you to register. It subjects the purchase to an enhanced background check. That's it. Oh, that's it? It requires you to go through an enhanced background check, yes, including fingerprinting, but it also requires you to engrave the firearm, fill out tedious paperwork, wait for a response regarding paperwork, keep paperwork with the firearm, limit who you can let use the firearm or if it can be used without the owner present, forever restricts the firearm to have the stamp and require another tax stamp levied to the government if it were to trade hands. So yeah, that's not just it. We're taking up a bill today to make sure that a deadly weapon, a weapon that can be made more deadly with the attachment <coughs> of these braces continues to go under the radar. And basically we don't have the kind of background checks that are needed. It does not make it any deadlier and they still have the regular background checks for purchase that are required under law. At schools where children should not have to practice active shooter drills. I don't get this. Children should practice drills for active shooters and other potentially violent intruders because gatherings of the innocent and vulnerable are targets for the malicious and evil, just like teaching kids about stranger danger. While in Farmington, we discussed ways to strengthen protections like not letting 18 year, old buy, 18 year olds buy military style weapons. No, we're not taking up the raise that age act. Yes, because being an 18 year old and a full fledged adult able to serve in the military and vote, it means you should not be able to exercise your full rights as an adult. It's not saying you can't have them. It just says that you must go through the background checks. You must register them the same way you would register them if they were a rifle. I will be honest. 
I don't know what she's trying to say here. Is she suggesting all rifles are registered? Or is she saying you should go through a background check to purchase a brace and register the brace? Because that's not what the rule says either. The ATF specifically states they cannot regulate the brace, only that it becomes an SBR when accompanying a pistol. And the background checks are intended to make sure that those weapons that are more deadly are indeed registered and are subject to a higher level. Again, not more deadly. In fact, a rifle would have superior ballistic performance, but the firearm would already be subject to background checks if going through an FFL. And if you go through the rule, if you go through the proposed rule, which does take a lot of pages, it's about 95 pages, pages. I will also say... I like how she holds up the notepad as if it's the rule. Oh, I forgot to print out the rule or bring loose sheets of paper, but I want to have a prop. No one will notice. I noticed. If it looks like a rifle, if it fires like a rifle, if it destroys like a rifle, have people go through the background checks and register it. Is she suggesting we legislate based on the looks like a duck, walks like a duck phrase? So if we cosmetically alter AR pistols, it should be perfectly fine then? Ah, elected officials making laws that govern us. Not the best and brightest. The debate continued onto the House floor, but seeing as this one is already over 20 minutes long, that will appear in part two, which I will link here and again at the end of the video once it is out. This took hours to sit through and edit, so if you enjoyed the content or appreciate the suffering, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Or share. What was your favorite idiotic moment from this committee meeting? Mine was the lack of reading comprehension. I have an open discord, so please join in on the discussion there and consider supporting me on Patreon as well. Thanks for watching.